What we, so what we are talking about today is obviously we're continuing on looking at the book of Joshua. And, you know, we see victory. When we look at the story of Joshua, the first seven chapters in particular, uh, it's victory, it's good news, it's miracles. But this is the first stumble in the road they've hit. This is their first setback, their first defeat that they have entered uh, since they entered the promised land. And basically, it looks at how did they deal with defeat? How did they deal with setback? How did they deal with sin? This was the first time on record that some had disobeyed the Lord since they entered the promised land. This is the first time on record that some had disobeyed directly what God said. And that was to stay away from the accursed objects that Jericho was full of. Now, if you remember last week's message, I talked about why Jericho was scheduled for destruction. It was because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was because they weren't Jewish. It was simply because they were in outward rebellion of God. They had these artifacts that were full of witchcraft, that were full of sorcery, that was full of demonic activity. They were in open rebellion of God, mocking God. That's what they do, you see, when they... That's what you, uh, you do, you see, when they create this alternative form of worship. It's not just idol worship. It's mocking God. It is. And God said, I will not be mocked. And what did Achan do? He took the objects they were supposed to stay away from that signaled the destruction of the Canaanites and took them into the camp. And because he had done that, they no longer, they, they were no different to the, they were no different to the Canaanites at that point. No different to them they were. They were no longer blessed by God. And how they dealt with sin is very important. How do we deal with sin? How should we deal with sin? We don't stone people like they used to anymore. But nonetheless, it tells you that to maintain order, to maintain discipline, to maintain victory, to trust God with what he has for us, we have to stay away from these things that God says is detestable. He called the practice of the Canaanites detestable. He did. It's, he said in Deuteronomy that it is because of these detect, detestable practices that I am giving you the promised land and I am giving and, I, and they have sealed their destruction they have, because of these detestable practices. So straight after the Battle of Jericho, after Israel received a comprehensive victory because they obeyed God, they trusted God. They had confidence in God. They moved forward uh, in God. They had boldness. They had the endurance as well to follow through what God, what God told them to do. Because they did all these things, they received victory. But straight after the Battle of Jericho, Israel received a comprehensive victory because they followed God's law. But sadly, not all of them did follow. And, you know, that's absolutely true. Even in the, in, in the promised land where basically it was a theocracy. So you might think, oh, isn't that, that, that's harsh of God, isn't it? You know, that's very, very harsh. You know, he made a mistake, didn't he? I mean, we don't stone people anymore. We don't sentence people to death for stealing magical, for stealing uh, condemned objects anymore, do we? But that was the law they were living under. It was a theocracy that they were living under at the time. I mean, we might not agree with it. The federal government said, you know, if Albanese in his wisdom said, uh, you will be sentenced to death if you stole and had demonic witchcraft activities in your house, I bet we'd all not, we all wouldn't do it, would we? Because none of us would be sentenced to death, would we? If we did these things, that was the law they were living under at the time. They had to. They had to maintain that law and order. They had to maintain that discipline because if they didn't, they would become just like the Canaanites. And they wouldn't receive the absolute victory and the promise they had that was theirs in living in the promised land. They, they took the accursed artifacts into the Israelite camp. And because they did not all obey the law and they took the accursed objects, they suffered their first defeat in the promised land. It all started 
from one man's sin. Let's put up Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmen, son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. His anger burned against Israel. There was a song that says his, his anger lasts for a moment. In that last song it says, but well, it wasn't a moment in this instance. It was, a, it, was a, it was anger that lasted until this sin was dealt with. It was. Until this sin was dealt with. These were items that were related to the demonic worship of the Canaanites. They carry a curse. The curse is sin. It is death. That's the curse they carry. You know, I know there are some people that are very, very uh, superstitious when it comes to, you know, they, especially, especially if you go to somewhere like India, for example, and you should be when you go to somewhere like India because there are objects in India that carry curses and the curse is sickness. And you have to stay away from these curses because like the Israelites, they brought these artefacts into their camp and they suffered defeat. They suffered loss. People died. Those 36 people that died were the first deaths that occurred from, uh, were the first deaths that occurred since they entered the Promised Land. They were the first deaths that had occurred. They were because now sin had entered, the, had, had entered their camp. This was not a war that was about personal wealth. This was about, this was a war used by God to cleanse the land of sin. Demonic worship. In a way, it was good that the Israelites uh, migrated to Egypt because the Egyptians didn't want to integrate with the Israelites and the Israelites didn't want to integrate with the Egyptians. There was two separate societies. So the Israelites kept their identity as God's chosen people. If they had not migrated to Egypt, they would have probably intermarried with the heathen tribes that were in Canaan at the time. As a result, you would not get a distinct race of God's people um, if they had not migrated to Egypt at that time. So the way they had to migrate to Egypt to carry on the identity, the church of an Israel that was to occur from generation to generation, they had to stay separate, they did, because not because God was racist or he preferred one race over another, but because they had to keep that pure line of worship to God that would keep people focused towards God. God told Solomon to stay away from foreign wives, not because God didn't love the foreign wives, but because God knew that the foreign wives would take his eyes off God. He knew that he would. And that's what God wants. He wants us to keep our eyes fixed on him. He loves us so much. And you see, people say that God is... You know, you, know, you know, God doesn't sin, well, he, and he doesn't sin, but he's allowed to, he can do what he wants. God is a jealous God. He is jealous for us. Now, this isn't, that, this isn't the jealousy, the pity jealousy that we might feel towards each other. This is the jealousy in the fact that he loves us so much, and he wants so many good things for us, and he wants to have all the victory, all the promises that are in him, but to do that... We can't be going off chasing things that are only going, that are going to destroy us and that are going to lead to our demise. Because it's only God that can bring us life. Because he brought us life. That's why he's jealous for us. He wants us to be fixed on him so that we can live life and that we can have eternal life in him. We can. So that's why he is jealous for us. And he wants our eyes to only be fixed on him. And God wants to cleanse the land of people who, where their sin was so entrenched that it was cultural and that they were only going to go one way. And that was take the people away from God. The land had to be cleansed in that regard. And, you know, we're still at war today. We haven't got peace in this world that we're at today. And we certainly don't have spiritual peace because there are people that are sadly going to hell. Now, it's God's will that none should perish, but millions already have done. Uh, they have 
means you already have it done. This is a spiritual war that is going on in our hearts. Christ made a way for us to be free. He's made a way for us to be free. It's about us choosing to win the victory. To win the victory, we, their victory, the, the victory for them was sealed in Joshua chapter 5, when Joshua submitted to the captain of the army of the Lord, and they submitted to Joshua, and they followed the laws and instructions to the letter. That was how their victory was succeeded, by them choosing to submit to Joshua as their leader, and Joshua choosing to submit to God. Israel's defeat, of, Israel's defeat at Ai was because not all of Israel followed God's law. This was their first defeat inside the promised land. Let's bring up Joshua chapter 7, verse 4 to 5. So about three, it said, so this, this, this is what happened. So remember the story, they, uh, they thought, they underestimated the people of Ai. They thought, well, we don't need that many people. You know, we walked around Jericho. The walls came tumbling down. They didn't realise that Achan had stolen things that was dedicated to the Lord. They thought, let's send 3,000 men. So the 3,000 men went up here from the people, but they fled before the men of A. And the men of A struck down about 36 men. So they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebrew, and they struck them down in the descent. Therefore, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. They'd never seen this before. They hadn't gone to battle and all of a sudden saw their people die, get killed. They thought, this is, this, this is scary. They knew at that point that the Lord had left them. Because in the past, the Lord hadn't left them. The people had lived. So they were scared. The people melted, the hearts melted, and became like water. The men of A struck down 36 men. That was 36 more than was conquered at Jericho. That, that had died. And that was a far more difficult city to conquer Jericho. It was a high, it was a military outpost. It was, this was a military strong point. This was designed to show the Canaanites that their walls, their military technology was nothing compared to the law and the word of God. It was, it was nothing. God wants to prove a point by bringing down those walls here, that he was powerful. And it was greater than any milk, than, than any of their artifacts, than any of their supposed knowledge of warfare that they had. This is God wanted to make a point to the world. Uh, he did. And he chose them because they were in rebellion of God. Far more difficult. A was a small city. It was small from military viewpoint. But they defeated the Israelites. They, and the Israelites realised they could be defeated. And they thought, well, hang on, we've been following God. We've been following God here. How are we defeated? What's going on here? Following God was not just recommended. It was essential to claiming the promised land. Otherwise, they're no different to the heathen nations that live there. Faith in God makes us blessed by God. Faith made them God's chosen people. Just like faith in Jesus makes us blessed. It also shows that it was not the strength of their army that won them the victory, but faith in God. Nothing more, nothing less. Without God's help, all would be lost. And that made them fearful. And so it is for all of us when the presence of God leaves us. Without God's help, we have nothing to expect but loss and defeat. So they had every right to be afraid. They did when... Uh, they saw 36 men get killed. That would have been very terrifying towards them. Uh, we're going to read, let's read up again. Let's read the next verse, next slide, please. Thank you, Rita. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. Remember in the, uh, when Jesus would say something, throw dust in the air because it was so outrageous. Well, this, this is why they did it. They were in grieving. They were there. When they, when they do that, it means they're in mourning. They're in grief. They are. They are wayward. They sprinkle dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, 
why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Next slide, thanks, Rita. Pardon your servants, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Joshua goes before the Lord, thinking, oh, the nerve of Joshua, thinking it was unfaithfulness on God's part. He thought that somehow God didn't keep his end of the bargain. Uh, he thought. He thought we did all this. He thought, you know, we did all we did all that you said we were going to do. But uh, why why did you bring this fifth cross of Jordan to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites? Why did you do this to us? He said, "Have you lured us into a trap? Israel's been routed by its enemies. They'll hear about this. They will surround us, wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name?" This was serious grief, not just for the 36 people that had died. Remember, they, were, they probably had funerals for the 36 people that had died. This was quite serious. It was like 36 people had died. It was almost when they were used to going to war and having no deaths. They were. This was a mass. This was, oh yeah, there was a lot of mourning. I'd imagine the 36 people would have been known. They would have family. They would have had friends. They all lived together in tents. Basically, it was a close-knit community. It was. This was their death. But there was also the fear that they lost the blessing and guidance of God. This was serious business. This was a national calamity. Remember, this was a nation. That was a nation. This was a national calamity, what they were facing here. Every battle mattered. It was not just win some, lose some. They lost this battle. And they had to know why they lost this battle. This should be how it is with our life. If we've, if we've somehow missed God's blessing, we should want to know why. We shouldn't be so full of man's programs that we miss God. What was the real reason they had sinned? Well, we find out. Let's put uh, the next slide. There it is, the next slide. The Lord said to Joshua, <coughs> stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant which I have commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen. They have lied. They have put, they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. I love how the Lord says Israel has sinned. Didn't say Achan had sinned. Didn't single anyone out. He just said Israel had sinned. He said, you guys are a team. If one person sins, you've all sinned. He basically sinned. And that's, and, and that's quite special. That, that's quite, well, it's quite confronting. That is. It's, it's almost like he's, he doesn't consider us as individuals. He considers us as one. He does one church. If one thing happens to the body, it affects the rest. Do you say something, Bob? I was just going to ask, uh, Jesus came to the land through the tribe of Judah? He did. So perhaps there was a particular emphasis that it needed to be chosen? It did, exactly. You're right, he was from that tribe. Exactly right, he was from that same tribe. Uh, the tribe of Judah, he was. So it was interesting that Achan came from that tribe and uh, he sinned. He did, very interesting. So the real reason for Israel's defeat was they had simply sinned. One of them had broken the law. And he didn't single out. He didn't say, Achan had sinned. Go and get Achan. He didn't say, you know, go and, you know, go and bring him before me and stone him. He, said, he, he, he didn't say. He said, you've got to find out who did it. Israel has sinned. They sinned. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Joshua had to do an investigation. He had to be Inspector Morse, in a way, uh, Joshua had to be. And uh, he had to find out who was, who, was, who, who was the one 
You know, that was devoted to destruction. I'll not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. And here's the detective's hat on. He did. We have a problem here. We have a crime that you have to solve. He did. He was, he was, he was the chief inspector, wasn't he? He had to, Joshua. Yeah, he had to solve, he had to solve this case. He did. They sinned. They lost power before their enemies. And because they had sinned, they had to deal with it. It goes to show that Joshua may not have known the identity. But God knew. God knew the identity of who did it. He didn't say who it was. Joshua had to find out. He had to investigate this. He did. Put his detective's hat on and investigate this. He did. He didn't have different sets of books. And, and it's a lesson for us as well. Don't have different sets of books. When it comes to God, have the same book when it comes to God. Achan probably thought he could have got away with this. He could have just hide it in my tent. No one's going to know. It's a, little, it's a little crime. It's a victimless crime. It is. You know, we're still, you know, we're not, you know, we're not, uh, you know, no one's being hurt or anything. Well, that wasn't the case. Those people have died because of it. So people clearly did get hurt in this instance. What you do in secret will be made known. That's, the, that's what Achan found out. What he had done in secret was going to be made known. It was. And will be dealt with. So blessing can come back to the nation. They had to deal with his sin, so blessing can come back to the nation. And it needed to. It was because of these afflictions that Jericho got wiped out. Let's bring in the next slide up. The next slide up, please, we'll do that. So here's what had occurred. So what, the, so, all, so what we find out in the story is they brought the people out, tribe by tribe. They basically, basic, basically, Josh, basically, Joshua brought the people out, searched, searched the tents. They did. Who has got these devoted possessions? They raided the tents. They did. And then Joshua came to Achan and said, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, I am honoring you. Tell me, what have you done? Do not hide from me. Achan replied, It is true, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. What happens? Next slide. Verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was, hidden in the tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua Together with all Israel took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, everything in other words, his tent and all that he had to the valley of Achor. And then what happens next? Let's read verse 25. Joshua said, Why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all of Israel, when it says stoned him, and after they had stoned it, the rest, they burned them over Achan. They heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remain to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor, of Achor, sorry, ever since. So that's how it is. It seems harsh, doesn't it? Because it is harsh. That's why it seems harsh, but it is harsh because it is harsh. But that is how God deals with sin. You might think it's only little, you might think it's a victimless crime, but there is no such thing as victimless crimes when it comes to God. Achan put it was a victimless crime. What did he say? He said, let me just read back again. It said, I have sinned against the Lord. He even confessed. You might think, well, shouldn't God forgive him? Isn't he a forgiving God that he confessed? 
It said, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. He saw a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver, so lots of money basically, lots of gold. He saw dollar signs in his eyes, or shekel signs, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, in his eyes, and, uh, and coveted them. So again, you shall not covet your neighbor's possessions. He coveted his neighbor's possessions. And he probably thought, oh, I'll just take this for myself. Get a bit of money. I mean, you know, we won the battle, didn't we? It's ours. You know, what, what, what's the crime? What's the crime? What's wrong with doing that? You know, what, what's wrong with doing that? I bet it was, I bet all his family knew this, knew what he did too. What's wrong with you know, what's, I mean, probably helped him come, probably helped him hide it. Yeah. What's wrong with this? You know, we've done nothing wrong, and they, and they, probably, and they probably justified to each other. Mm. Uh, they probably did. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But they violated God's law. Mm. They had to keep God's law. Because if they didn't keep God's law, mm. then they'd be no different mm. to the nation mm. that they had defeated. They had to be separate. They had to be pure. They had to be blameless. And what would happen if they got away with it? What happened if the if they if they if if, if if the Lord said, you know, it's okay, I forgive you, then God's word wouldn't carry any weight. It wouldn't carry any merit. God is a God of justice. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, I've, 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 I talk to Christians, other Christians, about how God is a God of justice. And he is a God of justice. You know, God cares about those that are marginalised. And he cares about those that are but he also but he cares but he cares even more about sin he does he's got a justice in that he should treat us how our sins deserve if he was a god of justice we'd all be dead because that's what our sins deserved but he but he sent jesus to pay the price for our sins he took the punishment upon himself that should have been ours. But this is pre-Jesus. This was. This was the old covenant. This was the law. This was a theocracy. The, the, the nation itself lived under the law. These were the laws they lived by. Sure, you might not agree with these laws that come out, but it was the law they had to live under, that they were under. It was the law of their land, law of their country. If you do do this, you will be, you will be stoned. You will be sentenced to death. They had the Levitical law, and that told them who they had to stone. They did, and you might think that was harsh. I mean, I I hear I, I see atheists that read the Levitical law, and they read it through this day and age, and they say, "Well, you're a hypocrite. You're supposed to stone me, not even shellfish. <laughs> no, you're supposed to." But they forget the fact that that was the law they were living under at the time. We don't live under that same law anymore. We're under the Australian laws of the federal government. And scripture tells us that we are to follow the law as long as it doesn't violate the laws of God. Uh, we are to. And that's what they had to live under. And if you got sent to death, well, too bad, too sad. You broke the law. If we're around these, you might, I mean, there are some laws in the US where they get sentenced to death. Now, I don't agree with capital punishment, but too bad, too sad. That is the law of the land. In, you know, Indonesia, uh, Singapore, you know, you get sentenced to death if you traffic marijuana, traffic drugs. Okay, I agree, it's a bit harsh. Too bad, too sad. That is the law of the land. And that's what they had to live under at the time. Too bad, too sad. It was, he broke the laws. Yes, he confessed to God, he confessed to his sins, but 36 people had died because he took something for himself. He took for himself. And it tells us that it's like a cancer. He might, it's, it, it, it started from his greed. He coveted that bit of gold, that bit of robe, that bit of silver. It all started from his greed. And because of his greed, the sin spread like a cancer. People died. People became fearful. It was a national calamity. All started because one man took what wasn't his. That's how it all started. That's how much of a big problem sin is. It was, it was harsh. No kidding, it was harsh. That's how God deals with sin. Thankfully, Jesus paid the cross. And that's why it's so important that we come to him for forgiveness. 
for our sins. But remember, think back to the woman that committed adultery. You know, there were these people that wanted to stone her. That was the law. The law said she was caught in adultery. She had to be stoned. But Jesus said that he was that sin cast the first stone. And none of us could cast the first stone. None of us could cast the first stone because we were without sin. I think the same when it comes to capital punishment. I know they have capital punishment around the world. If you're without sin, fire the first bullet. You know, give the first lethal injection. Turn on the electric chair. If you're without sin, none of us are without sin. So that's why I don't believe in capital punishment. But we have to, these are the laws that people vote in. These are the laws that people pass. These are the laws that their elected officials do. And the Bible says there is no authority up of that which God allows. So that's what we had to live under. That's what they had to live under in the desert. Capital punishment they did because that was because they could not have sin. Because if they were to have because if sin was allowed to manifest itself in the camp, more people would die. So that's why I had to live under capital punishment at the time. That was the law they were living under at the time. Sin will creep into the camp. People will die. They will lose everything they had been promised if they did not deal with this sin that was in the camp. So what we see here is we see sin confronted, we see confession, then we see judgment. Mm -hmm. Achan even confessed. He took it. He coveted it, thinking no one will know. He received judgment. Because they had strict laws being God's chosen people for that very reason. Because if they were to allow sin to that camp, they would no longer be God's chosen people. God's chosen people had responsibilities. There is responsibility when it comes to being God's chosen people. They had to live like they had to live righteously. They had to live pure. They had to live blamelessly. They did, because they'd be no different to the other nations. When Achan, what Achan received compared to the judgment against the nation and the debts of 36 others was minuscule. He was deceptive. He thought he could get away with it. And to receive the blessings of God, they had to have no interest in dealing with the cursed objects or people will die. And you might say, well, isn't that harsh? Well, if you knew people were going to die due to your actions, I think you can stay away from these objects. If I knew that 36 people were going to die, if I knew I was going to die, you know, and let's say I was in the army and I fought a war and I went to this village and I saw this treasure there, if I knew I was going to die, if I brought that treasure into my camp, I think I could stay away from it. <laughs> I don't know about you. I mean, look, I, I used to, look, I, used to uh, I don't murder people because if I did, I'd go to prison. And I think I could not murder anyone because I would know that I'd go to prison if I did. Apart from that, I know it's wrong to do it. I would be, I would lose the blessings of God if I did that. I think I could not do that if I knew that this was. If I knew that I was going to lose God's blessing, I was going to lose. I was going to go to jail, possibly be sentenced to death if I did in some parts of America. I think I could not do that if I knew that was going to be the punishment. Of course we can. Of course we can. It comes down to our own choices in the end. We choose to live God's way or we choose not to. It just comes down to our own choices in the way. This kind of sin, though, when it's dealt with, can lead to victory. They were now in a position to walk in victory. Sin had been cleansed from their camp. It's a victory that only comes after death. Our victory in Christ came after death. Jesus had to die so that we can live. We also need to die to our sins. Die to our sins and be reborn. Those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh and are now new creations. Galatians 5 verse 24 says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If Achan had come to, well, Jesus wasn't around back then. If Achan was around today, he would have come to Christ Jesus. Jesus would have crucified his flesh with his passions and desires. And he would have had no desire 
to take uh, to, to take objects that are his. I've seen money lying around the church. I've seen money lying around my house. I've seen money that doesn't belong to me, and my first instinct is to hand it in. I don't want anything to do with it. It's not mine. I don't. It carries a penalty if I take it. I know someone who used to smoke a pack of cigarettes every day of his life. God took that desire from him. He had no desire to smoke a pack of cigarettes anymore. When you're in Christ, you have no desire. You only want anything to do with these things. You don't want anything to do with these things. Once they eliminated this sin, they could move forward in the promises of God. And so can we. Once we eliminate sin from our lives, we can move forward in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Exactly. Just put it back. Even, you know, even even I, I found I found money that's around the church, and I put it in the church offering. I don't leave it in there. I do. Don't know who it belongs to. You know. Yeah. Money drops around. Exactly right. Don't want anything to do with it because you know God's removed that from my life. He's removed it from me. I don't want anything to do with it. It's like eating poison. And that's how we should treat it, like eating poison. This is poison. Uh, it is. It kills us. And we should want to stay away from it. That's how we move forward. Lord God, help us to move forward. Help us to drink the poison from our lives. That is sin. Paul said, I die daily. And we have to die daily. Uh, we do, Lord. We have to die daily, Lord. We have to have that cleansing, Lord, of not staying away from it, of, of anything, Lord, that puts us off the knowledge of God. Lord. May it be so disgusting to us, Lord, that we want nothing to do with it. In Jesus' name, amen. I bet you that gold or silver didn't feel so good to God, did it? No, to Achan, sorry. Once he, uh, once, he, uh, um, once he found out what had happened because of it. You know what I reckon happened? I reckon he would have known straight away. I reckon once they went to battle and 36 people had died, I reckon he would have known straight away what the cause was. Absolutely. Who wouldn't? Amen. So are you conquered by God? And I want that to really be our message, our theme, as we uh, explore what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be raised up godly leaders like Joshua, being conquered by God. How many times do we hear people saying, what is God's plan? I can't, I, I, I've got no idea on purpose. Where is he leading? Well, has he conquered your heart? He's not going to give you a message unless he's conquered your heart completely. And if he's yet to conquer your heart, I want to lead you in a prayer. Would you join me in this simple prayer? Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my heart to you. Conquer my heart uh, to this day. And I lay it all to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's a very simple prayer. Thank you for tuning in this week. Hope you have a blessed week. Uh, we'll have another message for you uh, next week. Um, our giving details are down below if you wish to support us. Um, any cent makes all the difference. So thank you so much uh, for that. Have a blessed week and we will see you online again soon.